everyone. everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Redman Originals <laughs> podcast. I'm Chris Pajak. I'm Paul Machen. <laughs> That's Chloe Blocks from a dad club. Um, you decide who's who. Liverpool uh, won an absolutely incredible game of football at the weekend and we get to talk about it. Splendid. Um, yeah, we're going to get through that. We're going to be talking about Liverpool versus Sparta Prague uh, in midweek and a little look ahead, a preliminary look ahead Oof. to Man City at the weekend as well. Uh, plenty of stuff, but a couple of things to draw your attention to before we dive in. Uh, if you head to axs.com and you live in the region of London and you want to come and see us live in the flesh on Wednesday the 24th of April. That's everyone um, below Birmingham, I think, isn't it? Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Just think about how far you travel for the gig and then add however much or less you care about us to that into that equation. You know, like there's people who travel from all over the world to, to see events. How much are you asked? We're in London, is what I'm saying. Um I did I did have a little complaint about this last week. It's flying now, so thanks so much to everybody asked for tickets. Um yeah, we pulled the fingers out. Uh, we're in Belfast and Dublin as well, which you can check out on ticketmaster.ie. I have no concerns about the ticket sales in there. They are absolutely stupendous, and we're gonna have an absolutely magnificent time in there. We're gonna have that in London, but yeah, um, if you want to go and get your tickets a little bit further out, so yeah, grab them. Uh, well, you can, it's us, and it's Keo, and it's just going to be chatting about how Boss Jürgen's Reds are, um, and then having a big old dance uh, and sing, so great stuff. Um, right, one more piece of business before we get into the chat about, inevitably, about how brilliant Darwin Nunes is and how much we love late winners. Uh, we've got a competition prize to give away. Last month's prize uh, was this, which was so aptly uh, ad- advertised by Chris Pajach. Uh, I have got no idea who this signature is. Daniel Agger, he's one of my favourite players of all time. I li- <laughs> 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 he's literally Nothing. one of my favourite players of all time. Though. But go. literally. Literally, literally yeah. yeah. Like as I, opposed to... Yeah, as opposed to Chris Ritson. <laughs> Don't slander, but Daniel Agger. Wouldn't, wouldn't dare, wouldn't dream of it. He's a good player. Um, anyway, yeah, we're going to do the draw for you to win this shit right now. We're going to spin the wheel of names and find out which of our legend tier subscribers on redmanplus.com is the winner. Should we have a little drum roll? King Main 75. <laughs> okay. Hey, listen. If it had an accent, I'd be all over it being King Mane, but it's King Main 75. Congratulations to King well Mane 75, uh, who wins that incredible Daniel Aga signed Liverpool 0809 away shirt. Uh, this month's prize, in case you're interested, uh, is this Liverpool home shirt, um, repro home shirt, signed by Carlines Riedler. So we got to interview him last month, uh, hosted an event with him as well. Amazing fella. Uh, if you want to have not just a boss Liverpool shirt, not just signed by a former Liverpool striker, but also an actual World Cup winning footballer as well, uh, then yeah, get over to redmenplus.com, sign up as a legend here or grade from captain to legend here and get your name on the wheel of names for next month. Right, sounds like let's get into it. Um, Dan Club. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, Forest nil, Liverpool won. Just incredible. Oh, just Incredible, remarkable, um, all of the superlatives. Um, disbelief is, is probably the biggest one because oh, no, I said to Chris this morning, like, you know, as you're getting sort of the, the dying embers of a game of football and you think, okay, has it been and gone now? You start to you start to wonder and fear what the ramifications of a nil-nil draw away in Nottingham Forest might be, not just in terms of the short term and the coach journey home and how grim that prospect is, but, you know, title race-wise, what does this mean? Do we need to start focusing our attention elsewhere? All those grim thoughts just start to creep in and more fool me for doubting the Liverpool side for a split second because it was just remarkable the, the never say die attitude of those group of lads is just a joy to behold it really is and obviously we'll talk more about the quality within that goal as well but just the, the spirit and the character they show time and time again just to keep fighting and keep a tooth and nail for every single ball every single second on the football page not just minute every single second matters to them it's just remarkable and the scenes Chloe the absolute we were just engulfed in this melee of chaos it was just <laughs> mental there was a person Person. I, I never met there was an individual on the floor at my feet at one point. I'm like, I don't know who you are, but sound. Whatever. It was honestly, it was it was just joyous, unconfound, unbridled joy. And like I say, it's even more the left off's even better when like you think your chance has been and gone. We had that one flick on the near post with Murillo and he, and you think, okay, that was it, and the keeper somehow keeps it out. So well that. Yeah, it's incredible. So, and they have a corner at the other end, we all know what happens after. I don't want to go too too deep into that just now, but you just think, okay, and then the corner's off play and you think this just isn't gonna happen, and then it does. It's just remarkable stuff. 
sum up what that away was like, if you can, please, Claire. Bedlam. Absolute limbs everywhere. Um, high pitch screaming. It was just. <laughs> it's just you. Yeah, just me. It was just, all of that. Sounds was just, just me. like the studio. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, l- like we mentioned there, you just grab onto each other and you just jump and you just bounce. Um, people falling over at people's feet and you're helping them up and then bouncing with them again. Um, and it, it was like a lot of the time when someone scores right in front of you, you celebrate with them. But it was a case of Darwin Nunes was somewhere over a body in here and all of ours were just tearing to ourselves. You'd just turned and grabbed anyone you possibly could. Um, yeah, it strikes it was me a bit like you're like like in church where everyone goes like peace be with you and turns around to anyone I'm around, around you. About. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except with more hugging, uh, yeah. yeah, and more shouting. Yeah, and then obviously people, you know, stand on chairs or you know bars or anything to to get you know the crowd going, and it was absolutely magnificent because. Um, Obviously, as soon as Darwin Nunes came on, we were all like, yeah, that's right. Forest fans start singing, he's just a shit Andy Carroll. Um, and it was it was Danny who turned around and went, gonna regret that, it's nailed on here. Um, and then when it happened for us to then in full course bounce and then sing it back to them as they fled the stadium in fume was unreal. Yeah, I um, I, 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 it was just a wonderful, wonderful moment. I've had people mention to it after the fact, because obviously... I was on the watch along, and people said it wasn't the Alison Becker moment. Like it wasn't the Alison Becker moment, which will be forever right there on the on the tip top pinnacle of a mountain that not that probably doesn't even exist anymore. Um, but it was just something else. It was another one, you know. I think you used both or all, all ended up saying the words to a similar extent of like they've done it again. Yeah. This is Liverpool have managed to pull this out again, and that's the thing, Chris. I don't want to sit here and say I knew Liverpool were going to will win that game. That's not true. I just didn't think it was dead and buried. You know, I, I had to hear a final whistle to tell me it wasn't possible because I've seen it happen too many times. Um, doesn't mean when it, when it does happen, it's not one of the most amazing feelings in the whole world. It's unbelievable, I, I, and and you know, it's hard to describe how they they keep on doing it. Really, it's hard to understand how they keep on doing it. Certainly, I do have a slight problem with the celebration. I don't think in the midst of an injury crisis, kicking the advertising yeah, hoarding is the greatest idea Darwin Nunes ever had, if I'm being totally honest. Um, that's just wild. I mean, but then that just shows how uncontrollable it was from him because yeah. he's just doing stupid stuff. It's yeah. like what everybody else was doing. I mean, I jumped up, we fell on the couch, the three of us together, and then I got up and I just sat there with my head in my hands for about two and a half minutes. They, they were there and they, it's just disbelief. And it should never be disbelief because this Liverpool side do it too often to continue to surprise me. But I'm so stupid that I am surprised every single time they do it. Still, I mean, again, you'd have to be dead not to feel something in those kind of circumstances. It's just incredible. I think Jürgen was asked in his post-match press conference about, like, does it still feel the same? And he's like, yeah. Because, yeah. like, that's it. They're the moments, aren't they? You know, say what you want. And I wouldn't want that every week because ultimately it would grow tiresome, I think, after a while. But, like, th- take I, you take that over a 3-0 win. You know what I mean? Not like every week, you know. 3-0 wins are just the most pleasant way to watch football because it generally means that it's comfortable and you've had it all your own way. Um, but, like, to just have a game. when you Because you, it's... I mean, Dan, part of this is, like, you're starting to write what comes. And I, I have it for me is that... I, I'm thinking, is there any positive way to look at this? You know, you know, the, the Manchester derby was coming up the day after. Okay, it's still close. We still we still have City to play at Anfield, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, you do. Your brain starts to shift away from that match yeah. and into what comes next. So yeah, that's that's what makes it so incredible. No, it does. Yeah, like I say, those doubts have definitely just begun to creep into my mind. Um, and yeah, again, they go out to prove me wildly inaccurate because that's why we do it, isn't it? That's what we do it for. That we have those moments whereby I think, okay, this might not be the day, and then they produce something like that. That moment, seemingly against the odds once again, where time has all but run out and it doesn't feel like it's going to happen for you. And to sort of to spin off what you just said. 
that that feels like we are building, we are writing this story. Like, you know, they always say the script writers. Not, if if you are going to write a script as to how Liverpool send off Jurgen Klopp, you know, ultimately it will be lifting the Premier League trophy at May, in May at Anfield. Of course it will. But the along the way has to happen as well. And if that's going to be a part of along the way, like we all reference back immediately to Villa Park when we did win the league. And it felt a little bit like that. I was fortunate enough to be there again for that. And it felt very similar into coming out there into the concourse. It all felt, I've, I remember this. I remember this feeling. It feels that significant because if also the way Liverpool have done things down the years, certainly under Jurgen Klopp, tends to be in that sort of manner. We don't do things the easy way, is to use that old adage for Liverpool point of view. But and that was that again because it could have been straightforward. You know, I think we could have made that game more straightforward for ourselves. We could have gone one up in the first half and then a procession to a three 0 win. But we don't. We find a way of doing it again, and that's just what we do under Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, let's um, let's go through the game itself. Then we'll we'll circle back around to the importance and all that kind of stuff toward the end. But it was a strange match. Um, I, I was kind of saying in the build up content, uh, the pre match shows that. It had a, a feeling of one of those games that we've almost forgotten about. Whereas, like two weeks ago, it was the Forest game was really important. It was loom, after Luton, it was looming in people's minds. The next Premier League game, you've got to keep things ticking over. But having gotten through the League Cup final and won, having gotten through the FA Cup game with an even weaker team and won, you're then getting lads back. I think that kind of changed perceptions a bit of like, well, we're, we're through it now. And now we just go about the business of Nottingham Forest. And I was a little concerned about that because what you had on the pitch was a bunch of lads who'd actually been running to the ground over the two weeks prior. And the ones who were coming back in were only, as we saw, able to come on and impact it off the bench. Yeah, we, we looked a little bit tired in that first half and we also really struggled to get in between the lines and between the midfielders. Um, and, you know, coming away from that first half, the, the big incident I remember is the fact that Callagher makes an incredible one-on-one save with the Langer. And that's what I felt coming away from the first half. It was... Um, we, we referenced this at half time with Joe Gomez and Joe Gomez obviously played that six and at times there was some really good you know one two touches these little triangles but it's Joe Gomez it's not McAllister playing yeah. that and the problem you've got there is Joe Gomez is a is a defender he's a centre half who also plays full backs and his first thought isn't to do these little triangles and step up into into the, and receive the ball and move with it so it, um, we tried to do these nice little passages of, of play but Joe Gomez was just one step behind which you can't fault him for yes. because his his first thought isn't the forward stuff, it's the defensive side. Um and making sure that he's covering everyone else where if McAllister was there, you'd have had a bit more of that. Um so yeah, it just felt like things weren't really going our way. Uh, we weren't creating loads up top. We we didn't have many clinical chances. Um I think Diaz has one down the right hand side where it literally goes out for a throw in. Uh, and Cody Gakpo heads one to, to no one in the middle of the, the, the penalty area. So it just it felt a little bit frustrating but also at the same time you knew that with the the players that we had off the bench uh, and also the fact that what Liverpool have produced in the last couple of weeks you just caught you, we, we get better in second halves generally yes. don't we yeah. so it was very much like a okay there's the base layer yeah and Klopp will have a word with them he'll sort something tactically and we'll go again and second half was much better but yeah like you said that first half struggled a little bit at times um, and obviously the, the big moment was Kelleher once again saving us it's quite funny because yeah we, we we, we weirdly got better yet got worse in the second half, which is a, which is a mad one. I, I want to stick with the Joe Gomez thing, Chris, if you don't mind. Um, I it's it's an it's an odd game for Gomez. I put him. I said he had a good game, yeah. and he did because ultimately he held his own at centre back, left back, and right back. <laughs> um, and like you know, just just being able to be that versatile and put in a, a good and put in a good performance is actually a better performance than you get credit for uh, in, in some regards. But Chloe's points right there. Things broke down because we were asking Joe Gomez to play one touch passes in the 10 position. Like, shit happens. You know, there's a reason why people are defenders, professional footballers play in certain positions, and it's because Joe Gomez is not good enough to play in a 10 at, at probably any level. You know, I've, I've seen your footy, well, when you get down there, probably enough, but that's not on Gomez. That was just that was the nature of where we were at. Bobby Clark had a good game, but he's not. He's not the finished article for us yet, and so a combination of fatigue and just a couple of lads being asked to go and do things above and beyond. Yeah, we, we obviously weren't at our absolute peak in that first half. No, I, I don't think we were, and I, you know, I, I won't have a go at Joe Gomez. Mm. To be honest, I thought he had a good game, and I think I sat here last week saying exactly the same thing. Yeah. There, there are limitations to what yeah. he can do in yeah. there, but like if you're if you're thinking Liverpool's attacking problems are the cause of the DM, then I think you've got something wrong. To be honest with you, I think 
you know, the attacking problems stem from the front three, not being able to get themselves in the positions. You can talk about how we get the ball there, of course you can, but again, it's not his job to get the ball into Cody Gakpo. It's not his job to get Cody Gakpo in space and, you know, get him on the ball. And, you know, had Cody Gakpo decided to try and loop the keeper, we might have been 1-0 up in the first half, but he doesn't. Yeah. He heads it back across and stuff. So I thought, again... He put in a decent performance in the middle. Like I'm not going to go to the best defensive midfielder display of all time. It was nowhere near it. But what what he what you asked of him, he did. There are limitations to what he can achieve in that position. It, and <coughs> we've not seen those limitations yet. I don't think in their whole because it's his second appearance at DM yes, for us. Hundred percent. Like come on, I mean, it took Fabinho three months to learn the DM for us. <laughs> he was a DM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah. it's really, it's really yeah. harsh to be criticising Joe for that. I think. Oh, I don't. I don't think anyone. I'm not saying he's hard, but there are people that out there yeah. that do. Oh yeah. yeah, no. yeah. Limitations like, is those. Limitations is the way, but also. For on goal, he keeps that, that that ball in play. He recycles yeah. it. He tries his best to to get the ball back. So yeah, look, like you said there, I thought he was sound. And actually, the further back he, he got put, I I actually enjoyed him even more. Um, and the fact that that's a you know that's a lad. If you asked me at the start of the season and said Joe Gomez is going to play the majority of the of four or five games in 11 days and I said he's getting injured somewhere mm. but he, he's not and he's and that's the best part of it this is a spell that at the moment Joe Gomez is on and I'm loving every bit of it in the start like I'd name him in the start in 11 if he could go again and again and again Man City mm -hmm. I'm looking at him mm -hmm. as, as, as a player who's who's starting that game because of how well he's done um, and I'm more happy for him at the fact that he's got a run of games and mm. he's at the moment not injured he's <coughs> been able to get through them and play brilliantly yeah I think the point is, and the point I'm making with the Goma stuff, is that Liverpool weren't at their absolute tip top in their attacking best because we had a centre half who was gathering the ball, who was picking up the ball in in number ten positions because that's how our midfield plays. Yeah. If we'd, you know, there were times where we actually asked them to sit quite deep, and I thought mm -hmm. being more of an anchor role suited them. But naturally, the play develops, and I thought the way we approached the game down in the first half, yeah, you know, we didn't have the clear cut opportunities. It wasn't a match of the day first half. No, it was a when you watch the you get a general sense of how Liverpool are playing by watching the game the fluidity of how we played I thought was brilliant I thought we we at no point did we run out of ideas in that half and that's a lot what happens a lot when you go against you know teams that defend for their lives but actually you find Harvey Elliott cropping up left mid and again Gomez is, is, it will, will go with the flow and end up in the tenure yeah, Bobby Clark breaking into the box and getting to the byline yeah. we had all kinds of they were just trying stuff and that was really encouraging despite the limitations yeah absolutely I was largely impressed with the first half display to be honest with you though Chloe's right the only <coughs> big clear cut chance did go their way and Keller does absolutely exceptionally well to keep it out I thought it was brilliant bit of goalkeeping as has proven in the past few weeks he's really been unbelievable but yeah I, I was pretty pleased with our first half performance thought it was a little bit pedestrian at times could, think could have been a little bit quicker a little bit more accuracy potentially in the, in the key moments but Joe Gomez was really good I thought positionally he handled himself brilliantly I thought his defensive duties was absolutely exceptional as well at times but there his limitations and again I come back to it because there's a couple of moments whereby the game does appear to sort of open up in front of him and if you do have Alexis McAllister in there somebody who can play that key ball that killer pass maybe it's a different outcome because there's one in particular by it looks like it's on and he tries it and he doesn't quite get it right and you think that's where you fall short with someone like Joe Gomez but again we know that we know why he's in there it is because of the circumstances the injuries can players go again we've only got the time when they're just back on the bench and all that sort of stuff so fully fully aware of why he was in there and I think he did a good job and ultimately you know we've, we've was it four wins in 11 days going into that yeah. game like it was never likely to be a, a swashbuckling free flow in Liverpool performance and it was always going to be a little bit horses for courses yeah. let's just find a way to get through and Joe Gomez being at the, the heart of midfield is the epitome of all of that yeah. that is getting through it at the very top of its level isn't well, it, it? Go, Gomez Elliot Diaz you know from Callister to some extent all gone to the absolute wall for yeah. us and that I mean Clement it's, it's five games in 15 days mm -hmm. you know what I mean as well you know in, well, and, which, is, what you, which is a game every what they don't tell you yeah, with the 4 and 11 stuff is one of them was an extra half an hour of a game yeah. as well yeah. Yeah. so it, you, they sort of gloss over more, that yeah. fact that we've yeah. got the 120 yeah. we've done 100 yeah. at the weekend as well yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. Yeah. that 120 yeah. was close to 150 with added on time yeah. at the end of half times and full time with like 4 and a fortnight well. to come as well you know what I mean with that, with that and the matter of running at full time probably around the pitch yeah. 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 no one ever counts that in that's not the <laughs> one of the sports scientists turn those little little vests off when they get to the full time whistle they want to be chatting we're tracking that as well. No, it's right, and that—that's the thing. You know, the 
we the lad it's not just getting through those games because we rotated for midweek and the, you know even more kids and they all stood up and were counted but it is just yeah it's it's, it's minutes in the legs it's it's great to have people back but that's only useful when you can get them on the <laughs> on the pitch and you know it'll only be useful when the lads who've actually done all the running in that time get to sit on the bench or actually have yeah. a week a week off here and there which is not happening Anytime soon, of course. Ever. No, <laughs> ever again. Yeah, between now and the rest of the season. Um, yeah, strap in for that one. The uh, let's, talk, let's do go to Gapo, Chris. <sighs> I saw and I went to I went to bat for Cody Gap a big time post match because I just don't like how there's always got to be a player that like people don't like you know what I mean or, or not just even don't like there's always a small subsection of fans who have to be a bit too much and take it a bit too far so instead of like he's not in great form or he's it's he's, he's, he's rubbish and he's not good enough for Liverpool and blah 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 he's not had a great couple of games you know for us he's missed a couple of really good opportunities for us along the way but um, he's a good player he's just he's, this season's for a man who's got eleven goals in all comps. It's weird to say, but it's not really. It's just not been Gakpo season. No, I think that's right. I, my my biggest issue is I don't think he gets himself involved in the game enough. Like I can't remember which one of the games you know recently it was, but he, he completed seven passes in ninety minutes, and like that's not enough to be quite honest with you. And you've got to find a way to go and get the ball ultimately, haven't you? And I think I think it's a struggle because. Essentially, we're playing with one of our front three in, in Louis Diaz for most of the last few weeks. And, you know, Harvey Elliott, I think everyone will agree, although he will never, ever stop working and he's still having an impact on games, he's just not that good at right wing compared to Mo Salah. Um, and he, he maybe doesn't have the tools to be able to compete at the, at the top level on in that position. And I think with Gakpo and with Elliott there and, and Diaz just trying his hardest as well, there's just... It doesn't really work between the three of them. So again, it it's not just Cody's fault. It is the midfield. It is the wingers that they're playing with. But he is struggling, and and when he's getting his opportunities, it feels like he's almost trying a little bit too hard at times. You know, he's dragging shots. He's taking difficult ones on where, you know, it was, it was last week, wasn't it, where. He, 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 he tried to hit it in the top bin when Nunes was right in the middle of the box. He could have just played a six-yard pass to him. We probably we probably score a goal, but it's just not working for him at the moment. And I feel a bit sorry for him. I, I'd love to see him get a little bit of a run at left wing because I feel like, and this is not because of Diaz's form or anything, but like he's so good when he gets the ball at his feet and he's dribbling with, with it. it. That's where I think. Excuse me. I think his strengths are, and he's not being allowed to showcase what his strengths are because he's doing this sort of job because he's tall and he he, he has got a good touch and he, he likes to bring players in. But it's not really suiting his game. He's just doing it for the team at the moment. Yeah, no, it is. It's an un, it's an unusual one for him, and there's obviously work to be done. But it's yeah, he's another one. He's, he's played the price for being versatile and being able to be available when we've needed someone to, to go there for him and he's just an awkward, it's an awkward fit at times we made that decision in buying him and it's the problem is is that there's always going to be a main man in most positions in that Liverpool team and there's going to be ones who help, to, who help out and fill in the gaps and what have you and he's gone from being looking like he's going to be the main man to being a guy who's the bits and pieces and, and, and filling in and I don't think he. I don't think stylistically he suits how we want to play. As in, he's not Darwin Nunes now, and he's a bit Bobby for me, you know, esque of course. But it feels like we've tried to move away from that. And actually, we said this before. Nunes is doing the Bobby for me, you know, stuff, and he's also being this like amazing line leading number nine as well. Diaz looks like he's back to form, so he's just an absolute menace every time he gets the football. And at some point, Salah's just going to walk back in and be Salah, isn't he? You know? I think like if you want, if Gakpo's there and he's doing the Bobby Firmino job, then you want two wingers who want to get goals. Yeah. And we didn't have wingers on the pitch who want to get in the box yeah. and get goals. Yeah. So it, again, it doesn't really fit with who he is as a, no. a number nine. Well, even it? Harvey Elliott, sorry, even Harvey Elliott, when he plays right wing, so often drifts into the midfield because that's where he feels more comfortable. He yeah. comes and gets. He wants. He wants work, Harvey yes, Elliott. He feels yeah. like he wants the ball all the time and he'll almost go to where the ball is. It's not a bad thing necessarily, mm -hmm. but he's so desperate to be involved and to make an impact. He'll come inside and ask for the ball, which is a great trait to have, if anything. But you're right, when he's playing with someone like Cody Gakpo, who also wants to come deeper and help out the midfield, it doesn't become congested, but he doesn't bring out the best in anyone necessarily then, especially yeah. certainly Cody Gakpo. Well, I saw people saying in the, in the, the comments during the match, like, why is, why is Elliott going off and Gakpo staying on? It's like, well, fucking knackered. Well, yeah, that, <laughs> Elliot's yeah. knackered, but also Elliott 
doesn't score enough goals. So you know, if you're gonna if you're banking on getting lads on the pitch, it sounds daft to come back to it, but you know, he's just a bit more of a physical threat. He's nowhere near as knackered, and ultimately he scored five times as many goals as Harvey Elliott has this season. So that'll be that'll be the reason why it is. But this is the thing: we're massaging our way through a trying period, and Gakpo is part of that. He hasn't. I don't think he's excelled in this time, but. Actually, you know, he's just come in, and uh, this is the thing: when you've got Jaden Dans there, who everyone just loves now, all of a sudden, I mean, that's a nice kind of pressure, I guess, on Cody Gakpo because there's another lad all of a sudden going to be fighting for his his place, those minutes that he might get on, on the pitch. But Dans is a kid; he's, t- he's got plenty of time to, to get it right. Gakpo's actually helped us carry the weight. It's just not in as spectacular fashion as like Diaz has done it or Elliot's done it. Or, or, or I think whatever. the thing as well is like you know, it's again, it comes back to probably the twenty-four hour news cycle, doesn't it? If, like these these lads have been playing for eleven days. Why aren't they the fucking best yet? Well, sorry, it's been eleven days, and I think they're doing the training on the pitch. To be quite honest well, with you, said exactly yeah. that. They've not trained. They've literally played game, recovered, played played games. So yeah. So that, are we surprised there's been no massive improvements? There shouldn't be a massive improvement in them in 11 days anyway, just that they've had loads of footy. Yeah. They're, they're, it's trying times at Liverpool Football Club and somehow we've walked away with four wins, which is, I'd be honest, that that surprised me mm-hmm. that we got four wins in those four games. It, you're not supposed to. No. no. And I, I thought, Chloe, just you know, on the get to get the win, we'd have lost that last season. I mean, I mean, literally, you know, we went to the city ground. It was a miserable time last time around. But I mean, that type of game where we were largely the better team, we, but the other team had a threat on the on the counter, and then like late corners or whatever, they they had I mean, they had a langer chance, and it sounds stupid to say it, but that a langer chance goes in last year because that's just how our season went. You just couldn't fathom how things like things would break down and all of a sudden we'd be level or we'd be a goal behind. And that was that just that general thing of things seem to be going more in our favour this time around. Yeah, I mean it, it helps when the lads are all sticking together and standing up for each other. It, it seemed like last year some of them didn't want to be in the spotlight. Some of them didn't want to be on the ball because they were worried about the, the mistakes that they were gonna make. Where, you know, this time you've got a group of lads who who will go to the well to help each other other out uh, and to get over the line they protect each other and we've we've just got a different you know kind of outlook we've got a different mentality this season um and obviously you, you do need a bit of luck here and there to to win the amount of games that we've won um but you need the hard work first and the correct attitude mm. and that's what Jürgen Klopp has instilled in every single player that's ever joined this football club under him and that is why these players are giving everything like you know Harvey Elliott was exhausted after that Luton game Never mind, like 10 yeah. days later when he's just putting an, uh, another performance on top of 120 minutes. he was so minutes. pissed off. It was great to see when he was coming off, yeah. wasn't he? Um, and, you know, to to have those players who will just give that extra 5%, and this is the other thing, is they know it's Jürgen Klopp's last season, so they're going to give that extra 5% that they've got. They're going to dig even deeper, uh, and it's great to see the mentality. It's all, you know, credit to, to Jürgen and that, that team because that's a team that last year probably wouldn't have came over to our end after a, a 3-0. I think we lost 3-1, three, three was it, to Wolves? And they did not want to be there. They, they went straight off the pitch. They didn't even come to, to our end of, of the pitch to thank us for going there. And yet, you know, on the weekend, that was a team that would not leave that pitch until they got us yeah. in absolute euphoria. Uh, and you could see it with Verge just saying to Nunes, look at what you've done to those lads. Like, he literally goes for the celebration. Look at them. Look at what you've just gave them. Drink it in. Make sure that you want that every single time you step on a football pitch. And, yeah. and hopefully we get that. Um, Darwin Nunes, Dan, he just makes stuff happen. You know, that's what he is. And, you know, I, I made that. It was a. It wasn't meant as a criticism of Bobby Clark before, but this is the thing where there's we've got players who are good footballers. We've got tons of really good footballers, and we've seen that in the last fortnight. But the true, the more special footballers you can put on the pitch, ultimately the more special moments you're likely to create. And it was just night and day from him not being on the pitch to being on the pitch. He causes it's a bit of a tried and tested thing. Chaos. He causes <laughs> he causes absolute chaos and pandemonium wherever he goes. No, he does. Yeah, he's high impact, isn't he? It's as yes. simple as that. And certainly, when you've been, um, 
you haven't seen him for a while. There was this sense, wasn't there? There was this feeling that, okay, we, we've missed you and now you're back. Like, what can you give us? Like, what can you... You've been away for a couple of weeks and you make up for that little absence. Uh, and he did. And then some. It was it was truly remarkable. I mean, the finisher in itself, like, we've almost lost sight of how incredible yes. that header is because of how much it meant and the utter the pandemonium thereafter that followed. We have kind of remiss of us to forget how good that the redirection on that header like it's a, a genius ball the vision from Alexis McAllister and the wherewithal and the awareness to do it is, is top top draw but for Nunes there's not much pace on the cross I think it's fair to say for him to get up and we he did it the other week didn't he very similar side finish yeah. the, the arc is, is neck back like that and to direct it into the corner is absolutely outstanding but yeah it felt like from the minute he entered the pitch there was a, there was a Nunes moment afoot and ultimately there was and, and again I said it earlier on like Write this Liverpool side off at your peril, but when we have special footballers, you can do special moments like Darwin Nunes. You, 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 you're very stupid if you think something special isn't going to happen, and Darwin Nunes just makes it happen. And, and the, the, the shit Andy Carroll stuff, I just want to come to you, Chris, because we've seen fans chatting. It's very, it's very, you can spot clubs that have been in the Championship recently by by what songs they sing, and that's definitely right up there. They've probably got a song about someone who's one of their own. I'm just saying. Um, the oh, Ryan Yates, yeah. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, I remember that one. Yeah, they did. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the goalkeeper kicks for me. It's the keeper kicks when they Ooh, go. Oh, I hate that so much. Shit, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, but you know, a clock was a bit annoyed with it at full time, but also you know, he's he, he's he's kind of put it to bed or whatever. But it's like. I get it because people only consume football these days via like social media, and they, they get this like the general things that the most folks to talk about. So no, they haven't been paying attention. If they think that that's even remotely true, then more fool they because ugh, Darwin Nunes is just magic. Yeah, he is, and I don't care about the chance, and I don't think Darwin Nunes really particularly cares about the chance. Sure and if he it. does, he's using it to fuel the flames, isn't he? At the end of the day, because it, it come back to bite them on the ass, and they're the ones that look stupid for singing it ultimately. Um, but if you think twenty five goals and assists this season is a shit, Andy Carroll, fair play to you. It's like you know what I mean. I'm not with you, but you know he's just alone and all that type of stuff. And you know we keep on saying, don't we? If if he, if he, if, you know, what, what can he kick? Lads, he's kicked on. Like, these, what is it? Not, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. kicked on. Yeah, we, yeah, have yeah. we not even noticed? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I'm going to do a, a deep dive tomorrow um, on, on Nunes and, you know, comparing him to some of the seasons from Mane and Salah and Firmino and stuff like that. Spoiler, it's up there. It's up there already, and we've still got 13 games to go, or whatever it is. I, I, who knows how many games we've got to go, really? Like, he's playing really well, and I think the midfield looked better for having Darwin Nunes on the pitch mm -hmm. as well, because they had an outball for themselves, and, and that is a difference between Cody playing the nine and Darwin playing yeah. the nine. All of a sudden, he could have had a hat-trick, to be fair to Nunes. Yeah. Like, and again, it's not his fault that he doesn't. You know, but um, it's the positions that he finds himself in. He makes the job of the midfielders a lot easier because they know exactly what he wants to do. There yeah. is, it's, it's also a case of that front line. Lewis Diaz has got bags of pace, but out of Gakpo, Elliot, and him, none of them wanted to run in behind on the on the half shoulder. And then when Darwin Nunes comes on, it's instantly over the ball. And I remember at the start of the season, we were all saying they're not on the same wavelength just yet. Would Darwin Nunes is always offside, and is it the the midfielder who's not seeing him quick enough, not doing the pass, they're doing it into feet instead of in behind where where he wants to go and exploit the space. And as soon as he came on, he had a, a one on one, which I think um, he misses, and that's fine. But we're instantly, as an away end, going, there it is. Yeah. That's where we're going to now get Yeah, He gets another one where he's in behind, where he feeds it to Cody Gakpo. Cody Gakpo doesn't hit the target. He then has one uh, near post on the left-hand side. And it, it, the goalkeeper doesn't have to make save, but it's the, the side net. But they're all Is instantly... that the header one from McAllister again, No, it's or? along the floor. He, he, oh, yeah, he's yeah, in behind. I think he's... he does the reverse ball. Someone does he's the reverse ball, yeah. yeah. Um, and then he's got the header from the, the, uh, the corner. And then, obviously, you get his goal. So there was warning signs as soon as he came on because we instantly went right lads well for you know 70 minutes you've had that to deal with everything in front of you now we're going to put something in behind you and good luck with it um and yeah he was he was superb and that that one off the line which is an incredible save by the way um at that point i just thought to myself 
that's it. Like, it just is an hard day. Like, that's just what it felt like. And I feel like any other striker probably does feel that. But then Darwin Nunes just goes again and has another header. No, but this because, time, but, 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 it. but he's got that indefatigable spirit that so many of Liverpool Liverpool team have got and I've had under Jurgen Klopp that it's just his job he just needs to be switched on and be, be, be you know he doesn't care that it's the 98th 99th minute he's asked the, the, the game's going and while the game's going and the ball's in play he's a striker it's his job to stick the ball in the back of the net but it's 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 great that I think they could have gotten down and could have, oh this is it you know particularly because the corner breaks down you know I think most people would have been you know would have been fine with going to throwing their arms up in the air Think back to Divock Origi against Everton. Virgil van Dijk absolutely spoons it up in the air and turns his back on disgust, in disgust at himself. Um, but I did, didn't have that because you may as well say switched on. What's the point in not? What's the point in being down? Because there's still opportunity. And yeah, Darwin Nunes, he keeps doing it. And it's funny because we, we've almost had this Darwin Nunes section on the podcast every week for the last sort of two months. And, you know, sometimes he has a, has a game where he'll miss like three massive chances and you just, you know, you bang his head against the brick wall. But more and more, he has those, but he's also just delivering. And now he's got a bank of evidence, Chris, where he just delivers. You know, he's he's won games of football for Liverpool with his composure and his finishing in, in front of goal in all kinds of different ways. Yeah, he has. And listen, the thing is, every top striker misses opportunities. And Alan Harlan the other day. Yeah, well, yeah, that's exactly. It's a perfect one. Yeah. You know what I mean? I back. I back Nunes to score that, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the, it, it's true, isn't it? And, the, you know, it, it's how is is your head going to drop when you miss an opportunity? Is your head going to drop? No, not for Darwin Nunes. He's going to continue to fight just like everybody else in this side does. And he's going to continue to impact games of football. Whether you like him or you loathe him, the stats are speaking for themselves at the moment. Mm. And Darwin Nunes deserves to be talked about every single week because every time he plays, he is having a huge impact on the game of football. Whether it's him scoring or the team winning, it makes no odds to him makes no odds to us. We're enjoying watching him, the end's yeah. enjoying seeing him. You know, I, I bet that Nunes straight after he scored was one there of the we. loudest Great. that's ever been yeah. done. Um, that's what you want as a football fan, isn't it? You want someone you can get behind, who tries hard, who scores goals. Yeah, Perfect. and I saw um, John from Red All Over the Land tweeting, he's like, Eric Meyer only scores goals. I was like, nah, I'm not having that. Like, you know, <laughs> I get the notion of, he was, you know, cult hero kind of, kind of status. You know, there's something there to buy into him because he's a bit, Mad and he's a bit weird and he get, he gives you feelings. But Darwin Nunes have said before he's box office. He's he's the kind of footballer that makes paying the money that you pay the extortionate money that you pay to get into football grounds. He's the one of those type of players that makes that worthwhile because honestly he, he creates drama, he creates twists and turns, he makes things happen. And whether that's he misses a chance and you you know you've paid your money to be an away fan or you know at the other end and you you get to laugh at him. You know there's, there's something about him. He's like great art. He makes you feel feelings whenever he takes to the football pitch and, he, and he's crazy and big credit actually understated credit because we're going to talk McAllister in a second and his assist and Gomez for getting the, the corner huge credit to Jaden Dans for dragging Darwin Nunes away from continuing to kick the shit out of the advertising hall <laughs> and he's about to go head over to I think he was dragging away from Louis Diaz to yeah. be honest <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he, was about, he was about to go head over it and Dans just went yeah there's an 18 year old kid coming to the rescue of Darwin Nunes bro um um, it takes him to 25 goal contributions in all comps of the season, 14 goals, 11 assists, which is absolutely super for what is effectively our you know, second choice, or our, our second top goal scorer. Not our main man, Salah remains our main man, but very, very encouraging um, stats in that regard. I think that takes him to double figures in the Premier League as well. I think he's on 10 now as well. So, yeah, I think and I, I saw something. He gets a goal or an assist every 88 minutes in the Premier League, which is... Impact, impact. Should mention Virgil Van Dijk for the goal as well. By the way, yeah, pushes the lad to defend us. So yeah. do not do this. Stays on side. Yeah, oh, I've, oh, I've seen one? I've seen a lot of this. I mentioned it briefly on the final way before. I don't think it's so that he stays on side. But it works. It works. <laughs> I think Was it Tottenham that did that to us? Someone did yeah, that to us. Did yeah, it to Tottenham, us. yeah. Like you see it more and more. I think he was just creating him space for himself. For himself. If oh. the yeah. ball comes into him. But let's not split it. Call it a happy, oh, call it a happy accident. Sorry, Chloe. Uh, if you if you haven't, by the way, watched this, and if you do agree that it was a fabulous goal from Darwin Nunes, do drop a like on the video. Oh, that wow. would always help. And we've got a code in celebration of the 99th minute goal by Darwin Nunes. We're offering a month of RedmenPlus.com for 99p. Uh, go to RedmenPlus.com and use the code, Chris. 
Nunes. Nunes. Um, yeah, and get a captain subscription for 99 pence for a whole uh, for the first month. So yeah, get involved with that one. Um, go on, Chloe. What were you going to say? She forgot. Forgot, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, it looked at me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> what was we talking about? Let's before? talk Alexis Nunes. McAllister. Oh, that's what I was saying. Jesus Christ! Sorry, wasn't it Burnley where Salah gets lobbed offside? Yes. Um, yeah. and, and in the line gets... of a goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Burnley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. that's what we were going on. About. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll come on to strange officiating. In fact, should we do strange officiating decisions and inconsistencies, <laughs> or shall we say consistencies? I loved Jurgen Klopp's response to the whole um, drop ball gate that happened uh, as a postscript to this. In that, say he just went, the same thing happened earlier on in the game. We were livid, and on the on on the flip. So yeah, we it, we were we fell foul of the referee doing the same thing. So whether it's the rule or not, he delivered the rules consistently. So there you go. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, yeah, that'll do for Having me. Having credence to it evens itself out. Yeah, someone told me that as soon as Luis Diaz's goal was reeled offside, when it was very much on side. So now I'm just telling everyone to get on with it now. <laughs> <laughs> the just fallout is mental, isn't it? It's brilliant. It's, it's wild. I mean, Mike Dean. I know. Jermaine Genus. Yeah. Alan Shearer. The, I mean, what, I, what are they all fucking doing? The best part, though, is the fact that, like, Nottingham Forest fans are calling us cheats. You're getting... You're about to get Wait, done. A man I, I said, forgot Clattenburg for fucking Forest. Yeah, they've yeah. employed him, Referees. Which is wild. A, analysis. Analysis or, analysis or something. Oh, what wow. are you fucking uh, doing, lads? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I seen a Man City fan. to PGMOL. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> a Man City fan on Twitter said, if Liverpool win this league, it would be the most corrupt Premier League ever. Yeah. A Man City mm. fan. Use the word corrupt. That term, I need to take umbrage with this because I mean, I even mentioned there's a potential of it on the on the on the watch long, but it's the new buzzword. Everyone like not everything can be corrupt at all times. If so, it's not corrupt, it's a cartel, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Close shop, pull the <laughs> pull the ladder up and all that. Um, the, I thought the Jermaine Gina stuff was fucking hilarious on match of the day because it's just and I'd forgotten, but as soon as it cut to him, I was like. Yeah, I think he played well, for Forest, didn't well, he? Like, Gary uh, Lineker literally says, I know you're a Forest fan, Jermaine, but what did you think of it? <laughs> well, he, really, well, he, the, he, went basically, he basically, to paraphrase, he goes, Jermaine Ginas, you're a Forest fan who feels aggrieved about this. <laughs> shit, that wasn't it. And he goes, yeah, it was shit, actually, yeah, because Forest didn't get the, get the points that, that, that we could have done if, if that hadn't happened against us, and I'm not happy about it. Anyway, great, let's move on with the next game. Fuck off. Like, I mean, I, I, I understand that we like a bit of, like, partisanship you know and and because uh, it, it adds to the flavor when people have got that passion for it like Shira is an absolutely brilliant pundit unless Newcastle are involved yeah. and he just becomes yeah. an emotional mess around it all same with Gary Neville and the Manx um but like what do you, like at least Shira gave us our flowers yeah. Like at the start, he, he goes like, listen, you can't take anything away from Liverpool, but... And then he goes yeah. into it, and, and they just lost their heads about it all. And listen, I, I, I really do hate sitting here and talking what about her and stuff like that, but it's classic. Like, we, we literally got one in the first half. Yeah. Um, there are so many decisions that are wrong throughout the course of a game anyway. Like, I think back to the Alanga chance we've mentioned a couple of times. Offside. Yeah. Should have been a free kick. We might have been 4 0 up, but we got a free kick there. You just don't yeah, fucking know I'm not outside having, of I'm, those moments. I am it was not two being, minutes yeah. before the fucking thing. The ball yeah, went out of play thing. twice. They had the ball, they had a chance to clear a corner. You didn't do anything with it, lads. I'm not having Fuck Jermaine Genus explaining the butterfly effect to me just on match away. today. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not having it. They could have they could have gone on and done this. Yes, Jermaine, but by that exact logic, Liverpool could have scored two perfectly good goals if that had happened. That's just you know, they could have built it, could have built Yes, they could have, would have, should have made fucking horse shit. That's, oh, oh yeah. The, the, the other problem with match of the day was, like, if you're going to do it, at least include where it happens in the first instance as well, in the first half, where it's against Liverpool. Because I remember that happens and their goalkeeper goes down. It's the it? keeper, yeah, yeah. And we're on end is an absolute uproar because they've tried to clear this ball and we've got it on the edge of the box. And it's like, no, actually, it's going to go all the way back to the goalkeeper. Yeah. And we, at that moment, we put them under a little bit of pressure. We were having an all right spell. Um, and the fact that actually they just didn't even show that at all. Um, and then obviously they show one one like angle of, of what happens. And look, it... It might be incorrect, but he got it incorrect in the twice. first does, half yeah. as well. Does Canate get kicked in the head 
in the build-up to this as well, by the way. He gets, he gets a, a bit foot in the head by one it's of the It's a hurt foot either way. Whether he makes contact, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Keller catches him a little bit. But yeah, you're right. Ultimately, he gets it wrong twice. That's the problem. And yeah. we were fuming with the first one because we knew he was getting, never... as he was dropping the ball, the keeper's feet were going, well, that can't be right. Yeah. I think McAllister had the ball sort he of did. 25 yards from goal. And we were like, surely that's ours. And then in the build-up to him doing it for the second goal, which subsequently leads to our goal, in the second half, sorry, subsequently leads to the goal, we were all thinking, I hope he does it the other way around yeah. now. And yeah. he did. And we were like, okay sound they evened yourself out and then what happened well how many times during the course of a game have you seen the ball flick off our player and we've been given a corner or the other way around (laughs) they get decisions wrong 10 15 20 times a fucking game and no one's got the uproar. No one's putting a mic in front of Mike Dean. What did you think about that throw in, Mike? Yeah, exactly. Shouldn't they have gone to Liverpool? Yeah. 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 No one gives and a shit. The beauty of this is we now got Forest fans saying um, Paul Tierney was in favour of Liverpool. Paul Tierney. <laughs> Paul Tierney. <laughs> maybe Paul Tierney should never referee a Liverpool game again. I would Sand. back that. I- I, I, I think we're all yeah, fine with that. Not yeah. of unity with Nottingham Forest <laughs> fans. Yeah, solidarity with my brothers and sisters. It's um, mad though the amount of like uproar because yeah. we had a perfectly good goal <laughs> this lad and there wasn't this much uproar. Like if you all just would have came together for that, maybe we don't get that ball, uh, you know, yeah. this late on in the season if everyone just collectively fumes yeah. at that moment that Lewis Watch, the Elf. We just replayed that, that game, game, by the way. Yeah. We had an extra 35 seconds I of the minimum eight minutes of added time. Believe it. After they where they had, had two, two players yellow. Yellow card, yeah, all exactly. time wasting. Yeah, all time wasting. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Laughable, delicious. Uh, Honestly, like it's Jeez. just fucking stupid to be honest with you at this point. Um, yeah, Alexis McAllister quietly, Chris, going on about the business of being absolutely brilliant. For Strong the disagree. It's not quietly. He's fucking marvelous. Absolutely marvellous. He's just getting better and better every week. He, you know, Virgil van Dijk has carried this side over the last couple of weeks with some massive goals, but Alexis McAllister has been there as well, hasn't he? he? You know, a couple of assists against Luton, obviously a brilliant assist there. Whether he's playing the eight, whether he's playing the six, he is absolutely excelling at the moment. And you know, I was chatting to Dan, I was saying to Dan this morning, I wanted to bring this up on the podcast because I think quite rightfully you've said for years now, you know, you talk about the strength and the athleticism and tall midfielders and stuff like that. You can cop booked his own send with Alexis McAllister, didn't he? And there's a reason that he's booked his own send. This is a guy in there who reminds me in some ways of Zabi Alonso in that that one in the middle of the park, he, he has time and space all of the time in the yeah. most congested area of the field. The the ball that he plays through for Jaden Dance to whip it out to, is it Tim Akash or Harvey Elliott? Like, he's outstanding and he's seeing the game now and I think he's better for having sat back and played the six a little bit. I think he understands what a six needs from him in this system. And when, when everything else is on fire around him, Alexis McAllister just seems to be calm and composed and able to produce. Yeah, absolutely sensational stuff. You know, the all the best stuff has got his fingerprints all yeah. over it, Dan. You know, there's a chance that Luis Diaz has in the first half where he gets in behind, he makes a nice little run. It's McAllister who plays that. He's winning balls back in midfield and setting off and setting off counter attacks. He's just yeah, he's He's got all that. I, I get the Alonso thing. You know, he's doing the things I think we were, we were hoping Thiago was going to be able to deliver for us on a consistent basis as well. Um, it's a sensational football. Sensational. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he he's omnipresent at the minute. Of course, everything good about Liverpool Football Club. He's just and it's everything as well. And I think Chris just touched on it there. Like he seems to me to have benefited from playing a little bit deeper. Obviously, he's a soul sick. He did a little bit in the double pivot at Brighton, but it feels like he's got better and better as his Liverpool career's gone on in terms of the way he's playing the game. Whether that's understanding the system, understanding what's required as well, but just in terms of individual performances, because he doesn't shirk any of that defensive responsibility mm. either. He doesn't relinquish that. While even though he's playing the more advanced role now and he is very much dictating the play and a lot of what is good about us is going through him and his vision his awareness his presence of mind and what's around him is just absolutely top class I agree he feels like he's always got time and that's such a great trait to have if you never look like you're under pressure and you can his use of his body as well is exceptional he shrugs people off time a bit like Genie again. the way he gets his yeah, body he does, and, yeah he gets his arse in doesn't he yeah and people can't get the ball off him and he just feels like it sticks to him at the minute and honestly just a joy to watch right now he really is and it's that is that combination. He's got that flair, he's got that creativity, but he's also got that work weight and the work effort, and he's got the ability to pull it all off as well. That's massive, the way I create stuff, Chloe, because, funnily enough, I was chatting to my dad about this this morning, about, like, Jürgen Klopp came in and, and he found this team and he needed to go and put together a bunch of lads who just wanted to run through brick walls. And then this second team has that, 
but also has this incredible technical ability on top. So McAllister has got all the hallmarks of a classic clock midfielder, except he just happens to be this Argentine creative genius with the ball at his feet as well. So, yeah, in many regards, as much as, yeah, I agree, he books the trend of us getting these six-foot sort of angry giants in our, in our team. He's um, He's got the gnarl, he's got the determination to add to the sort of the silk and style that he brings as well. Yeah, he does. And, um, I mean, like you mentioned there, the, there's times in that game on the weekend where he receives a, a pass that's not the greatest pass. He's got a man instantly on him and he uses his body and he gets his body between him and, and the ball and the man. Um, and he gets around him and then we're free to go. Uh, and you know he's got that killer instinct to, to put in a pass. And he was absolutely everywhere. The fact that, you know, he's the one who, who intercepts the ball and look, Nottingham Forest do absolutely horrific from that corner just oof it up the pitch and you're fine there um, but he's still there the little swivel on the ball all of us in that other way and it's like just put it in the box just put it in the box but he's got the calmness to turn a player and have a little bit of vision and dink it back post like the calmness is outrageous so yeah he's got absolutely everything to work right um, the, he's, he's also an Argentinian which I absolutely adore like Mascherano hard as nails and Macher even though he's small you, you get that yeah. same feeling I mean I swear you know when Spurs beat us he was in Romero's comments so he's won a World Cup with absolutely having goes at him as well which you, you love to see uh, and the funniest thing has come out of this weekend is Jürgen Klopp um, on inside Anfield where it's McAllister and Dominguez Dominguez has just lost in the last minute of a game Argentinians catching up and Klopp walks between them and goes Wonderful player and shakes my cast in and says that to the fingers and, uh, and then goes, Muy bien. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to watch that. I've not seen it. Is it good? on Twitter now, it's really good. Yeah, it's oh, that's stuff. class. Um, Chris, it's up there with the best, but what else in terms of that feeling, the late winner, you know, the, the, of the many late winners, what else comes close? Um, Obviously Everton, like you know what I mean. That's that's the that's the pinnacle of it, yeah. isn't it? I think for some reason Newcastle at home last season really always mm. tugs at the heartstrings. Spurs four three. Spurs four three. Yeah, There's, it's unbelievable how many we've actually had, really, isn't it? Yeah, genuinely. The one I got, and you guys might be able to attest to this, having been being in the ground. I got Aston Villa away, title yeah, winning season, it. big Stay time away. from yeah. that. Like that, they're the ones where, and particularly because there's a potential point swing occurring, you know, where we could have lost out, City could could have gone top of the table on the Sunday if we'd not won won that. Just to find that way to sort of dig deep, at historic away ground, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I had proper proper Villa vibes. Yeah. No the significance that. of it as well, well, the potential significance of it, should yeah. I say as well? It felt massive because, as I say, those nasty, nasty thoughts began to creep their way into my mind and what this might mean, further impact in the league, the title race for City to come, and all that sort of stuff. So to do it in the manner that we did did make it feel that extra bit yeah. special. And we've had massive late winners, and they ultimately may or may not go on to mean anything. Obviously, the Villa one did, but Newcastle early on the season, obviously with Darwin Nunes later. On that felt massive, but it didn't mean as much in the title race. So for me, this one on the weekend was right at the top. Although I was lucky enough to be the Origi Everton one as well, and the man of which that oh, is just just will never be beaten. It's a joke. No. It was just stupid. stupid. That one was that absolutely stupid. Um, just brilliant. I, I think Dan does it, has said this really well. There, we don't know how significant this is yet, um, but I can't help but feel if this ends up being a season where Liverpool do win the Premier League, this will be the game. Like, right. you know, obviously it'll help if we beat City and people will remember those more, but I'll I, Aston Villa. You know, Liverpool won 27 games on the bus spin or whatever in that, in that in that season, but that felt like the one, this this feels like the one. Yeah, it does, um, because, you know, it, it feels like the lowest of lows coming away with just a point from, from Nottingham Forest who are struggling um, and, you know, still could go down. You, you don't want to drop points to a, to a relegated side, especially. Um, and, to, you know, especially with the way their fans were, you know, the sign-on chance, all of that, it, it really it makes it even sweeter to, to win in the way that we won. Um, but, yeah, like you mentioned there, this is a side that, look, it's now in our hands in terms of the weekend. City didn't drop points either, and now it's a massive clash. Um, but you're going into this bouncing, yeah. and you're going into this going, you've just scored a last-minute winner. Like, yeah, use one on Derby Day, but 
you, you didn't win in the same way that we won we'll here. We'll polish the bat um, anyway, Yeah, yeah, totally <laughs> true. Um, Nukovigi, can I just say sorry? They went for 20 minutes, oh, Nukovigi game was like Pele. Oh, yeah. What was going on there? Left 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 from distance, mate. Was he yeah. was well. in. It yeah. was a joke. He was holding people off. He was big. Oh, mate, it was a joy to watch him. Auxiliary <laughs> right back, digging oh, in. I, joke, I, I, anyway, I, sorry, sorry. I turned around to you and went... I know, he, I know he won sure. like won us games and scored massive goals, but was he ever that good in a thirty minute period? We should probably look at Simon in that right <laughs> winger, you know. Everything about him was just imperious for, for a bit. He, he tailed off then, thankfully, but yeah. he was untouchable for twenty yeah. minutes. There. Tell you he what, was. if Marcus Rashford had his work rate, oh, sure. what a play oh, well. I don't have there. Um, Right, he's got a couple of super chats and comments and whatever coming while we were having those fun old discussions. Ashley Frith uh, says, uh, This weekend there was another made special, nearly at the levels of Alison Becker moments. What a team, what a manager, what a club. Yes, indeed. Not at the, quite at the Alison Becker levels, but understandably so. Shirts were on. Look, the shirt wasn't coming off for a win in that, in that environment. The fucking goalkeeper scored the winning goal. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and we'd been locked in a room watching football all season by that point. I'd lost the plot. Um, <laughs> all about that. I'd like to big up Chloe. Her raw and authentic post-match content has been a joy to behold. Redman signed an absolute gem getting Chloe on the team. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. Comments about me and Dan next. <laughs> uh, uh, you okay, fine. No. Okay, fine. I'll text yeah. my dad now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's my birthday today, same day as King Kenny, the Ev and the Manx losing on the same weekend that we win in that fashion was all the birthday presents I needed. Have a tenner, love from Rumpel. Oh, oh that's Ryan lovely. W. You could have asked for a fucking Man United win as well, though. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. Congratulations. Uh, right, cool. Yes, we will return uh, very, very shortly indeed. We're going to have a short break and then we're going to be chatting Prague and City. Hey all you wonderful people, we've got an amazing competition prize for all of the Legend Tier subscribers on Redman Plus this month. I was lucky enough to interview former Liverpool striker and World Cup winning German superstar Karl Heinz Riedler and get him to sign this little beauty. Oh yes, look at it. It is it's a sensational shirt anyway, but it's got Karl Heinz Riedler's name on it, and you can win it by being a Legend Tier subscriber on Redman Plus by the end of this month. Uh, and yeah, your name will be in the draw to win. This, look at that, wonderful, and it can be yours. Yes, get involved, head to redmanplus.com, sign up as a legendary subscriber and get your name in the draw for the Carlines Riedler shirt. And don't forget, we've got a code running. If you want to try a captain subscription for 99 pence for a month, use the code Nunez. It won't get you in the draw for that competition, but it will give you a good old feel around everything else that we're doing. And I don't know whether you've realised this, but the Reds are absolutely amazing. Uh, so everything that we're doing right now is just... I mean, it's all, it's normally amazing, but the Reds are actually helping it be absolute gold. Um, so yeah, get your, get your fill of uh, Redmen podcasts and documentaries and features and all that good stuff as well. Right, cool. Um, there's another game of football. Um, Chris Bray, Jack Sparta Prague, the Europa League, another day, another week, another competition, uh, another game where we haven't got loads of fit lads available, maybe one or two more. Um, the best thing about this in some regards is... It's two legs, and I know everyone's going to want us to keep it going, and you know you've got to win and win and win and win and win, and you'd like to go into City bouncing with loads of optimism, having had another win. If Liverpool just go and do a classic European away performance here, and I mean nil nil, win one nil, or worst case scenario away. lose one nil. Honestly, as long as we've got the legs for the weekend, then that that's that's how you construct your way. This was your... always going to be. A, a tough one wasn't it we said it when we drew them the distance that you've got to travel as well is is you know a little bit further than we probably would have liked um but it being before manchester city listen for me yeah and we'll talk about one game at a time but like if i was in charge of liverpool football club i would be thinking about manchester city and not sparta prague and then when when you've got it then what that then means is exactly what you're saying there is you've just got to go and just put 11 lads out and be in with it with a shot in the second leg for me because i think we can do it in the second leg at anfield no matter what the score line is mm -hmm. um it is going to be interesting to see and i do think yeah gonna go stronger than i probably hope he goes because he keeps he, doing because he's consistently done that forever um but yeah it, it's just get through it nil nil would be ideal Sneaker 1-0, even better. 
but just having some players that can play on Sunday is is probably the most important thing for me. Yeah, are we all going to be massive shitbags on this one? Because I know I Dan's certainly not. I'm a hundred percent. Dan, oh Dan's. Well, hang on. I, but, I, well, I think we can name a pretty strong eleven without massively impacting on Sunday. Okay, that's the that's where I'm pitching this now because if you look at your drill, can I ask before you get into on. it? Is it a strong? Is it something we'd have considered a strong eleven three weeks ago? Perhaps not. <laughs> no, but I think that's a very fair caveat to my point. Um, but I think we can. I think we can. And I spoke to Stephen Manor this morning about this very topic, and I kind of asked him like, "What would you be doing? Would you be rotating your business end now a little bit? Would you be going full strength Angling for a free transfer to Real Madrid? Essentially, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no. Um, and he was sort of in the in the camp with me, I think, in, in so much as you can get a pretty strong strong side out there without going gung ho and what to name our best. I mean, ultimately, the fallback of Anfield we also discussed, and that's a, a beautiful, beautiful thing waiting there, regardless of what happens on Thursday. But yeah, I think when you look at you know what's in the rounds, what you'd class as the very front line first team squad now, I think you can name a strong team. You have got Joe Gomez, obviously the ultimate versatility man, and listen, people might have him in their team for for Sunday in Man City. But I potentially wouldn't, so I think you can use him in midweek. Mm-hmm. Joel Quanta, likewise, I think falls into a similar category. Bobby Clark certainly falls into that category as well. So it, Salah, a lot of this hinges on Salah and his yes. availability, of course, in terms of the front line. But I think you can go strong here and still get away with it falling into the weekend. Is, is, is there just something, Chloe, to almost play in the same team again from the weekend? And that, that way you get more... You don't have to start Sob- Sobber's lie. You don't have to start Darwin Nunes. And if Salah's there, you know, maybe you add him on the bench, you can give him a little bit. Whereas, so you've got the ability to win the game if you need to without risking too much in terms of fitness? Um, or is this just Jaden Dan's FC? It's Jaden Dan's FC for me, this. Um, <laughs> I need absolutely everyone rested and, and ready for um, Manchester City, to be honest, because Manchester City, it's death of a thousand passes, like, and yet we're at Anfield, and yet we can create a special atmosphere, but you're still going to be tortured at some point with Manchester City. It's just, you're going to have to dig deep at some point in that game and you're going to have to get through and I need absolutely everyone available for that. Um, I'm absolutely sound with doing what we did, you know, Southampton where you give Verge the first 45, Canate the second 45, absolutely fine with that. Costas, lobbing back in, sound with me. Um, it's it's Bradley and uh, the, this is the thing, do I go Joe Gomez right back? What do I do here? Because actually, um, I, I, I'm really liking Joe Gomez at the moment in time and that City game if I want to be safe I am putting him in that squad um, where though sorry where, where, where would you play your goal for City I'd left back would you over Lobo he's not in my side for City so therefore you can play right back for me on Thursday night because mm-hmm. you've got Vitaro Endo yeah. can I give you my side because it feels like a good time just two seconds I just want to quickly just get people up to speed with Sparta Prague because I think this is best consideration Top of the league at the moment, yeah. in, in top of the Czech league, they drew with Slavia Prague, um, who are the other team fighting for the title with them, nil nil at the weekend. So that does play into our hands a little bit that at least they'll have gone through an intense encounter before it. But um, they've scored fifty five goals. They've only conceded fifteen goals in the league this season. So yeah, I mean, it's it's too hard to judge. They were still. It, it, there's no way of getting around it. It's still a better draw because you're in the Europa League than drawing any of the teams that are probably at this stage of the of the Champions League apart from maybe the Portuguese teams which is bizarre like a bizarre flip where all the better Portuguese teams are in the Europa League at the moment um, Man City got Copenhagen that's yeah bit of a 50-50 that one. yeah um, but yeah definitely I don't, I'm not sure we can take our eyes off the prize in terms of going into their ground a team that's flying top of the league in great form and all this kind of stuff but anyway right Chris Pajak you, are, you have been chomping at the bit right. to give us your so team. I've gone Kelleher in goal, mm-hmm. Gomez right back, Kwanzaa, Canate slash Van Dijk, and I've literally written 45 each. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Akash, yeah. Macherendo, 45 minutes each. Yeah. Clark McConnell, Gordon slash Kumas, take your pick, Dan's Gakpo. <laughs> Which then leaves me, Kelleher, Bradley, Canate, Van Dijk, Robbo, Endo, Elliot, Macher, Salah, Nunes, Diaz for City, and if Sobers like can play instead of Elliot, I'm taking that all day long, and I have put Salah in up front against City. Okay, Chloe, what is your shitbag team that you're putting out? Um, I mean something similar. I th- I th- yeah, I th- James McConnell in the six. Yeah, probably. Jaden Dan's up front. Yeah. Is there Lewis Kumas on it's the left? It's last and, sixteen uh, round of a European game. What's what is going on? Twenty first half, don't we? Yeah. 
Yeah, look. I- yeah, but can I just contend? Just the other flip side of this. I know we're all lost in the Man City thing. If we win, if we get this game won in the first leg, you get to get that back. Yeah, that's right. Next week as well, you get to pour it all into Man City <clears> and then take it take a take a breather afterwards. I'm just really hoping that with half an hour to go that we can lob on Darwin Nunes, Dominic Sobosly and Mo Salah to be perfectly honest uh, and say go and win me that tie please boys. Uh, I think we've got a lot more trust than the youth players yeah. at Liverpool Football Club than you me Paul Chris just right saying. There. I think they can win it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is what you're saying, Paul, <laughs> that you don't believe in the quality of Jaden Dance and Ke- Kate Gordon kicked the ball for us? He's a, a good player. Um, he is a good player. Yeah, I yeah I yeah. No, I'm not having it. I've I've made this mistake on like the last three weeks. Probably where we have these debates and then oh, yeah, he's not doing put, it. Yeah, he can just put his best possible. He team will. He, he will do. We're trying to win them. McAllister starting and then getting forty five. It's quite good. Like that's strong though. Yeah, strong. I don't think there's any chance Jaden Dans or McConnell start this game. I think McConnell does, I don't think Dans does. I think Dans could. I think Dan's every yeah. What's your team? <laughs> My front three would probably be Gakpo, Dans, Elliot. What? Yeah. So you're starting front three. Yeah. Away from home in Europe. Yeah. Just say that again. Gakpo, Dans, Elliot. Gakpo, we can't go Diaz again. Dans, Harvey, Elliot. But yeah. you can go Elliot again. Yeah. Because I don't think he's going to play on Sunday. Okay. Wow. Unless he plays in midfield, if Sobers like can't start. But I think Sobers like there's no it doesn't feel like there's a world where Sobers like oh, won't be available. It depends Sunday, whether it? they're ready for that sixty minutes thing, doesn't it? Yeah. And then whether you need that ahead of Man City because Sobers like looked miles off. He did. He needs some minutes. If we think of what Jurgen's going to do, then rather than what we're going to do, because okay. me and Chloe yeah. are putting aside up that we would do. Yeah. I think Jurgen is going to play Kelleher. I think he'll play Gomez probably at right back. Mm-hmm. I think he will split time between Van Dijk and Canate. I think Kwanzaa will start. Yeah. I think Tim Akash will start. Yeah. I don't think there's... T- you could debate maybe Bradley for Gomez, but I think that's a fairly safe Jürgen back five. I think there's something in this of, like, if we if we treat Jürgen at his word, I'll take him as his word, that he treats one game at a time, Bradley needs a rest. So I agree. I think Gomez starts right back because Bradley just can't go yeah. again. And you and I think you really want Bradley for the Man City game. You really yeah, want you, you really want him for that. Um so give him give him some time off and see if he can recuperate. And then who else there of the ones you've gone in time and time again? Diaz probably right might fall into that. Elliot might fall into that as well. Because the thing is Elliot, it's all well and good saying he's not going to start against City, but like he, he's just He's just run and run and run and run for like the last four or five games or whatever. He's, he's you run the risk of this is the, this is the hardest part now. Even though it should be easier because we've got options, it's how do you manage to massage those lads back into the team without breaking the ones who've been holding it all together right at the last at yeah. the last sort of hurdle. So I do wonder whether someone like Elliot might might be the sub here, you know, like give him give him the last half an hour mm-hmm. or whatever of it, because you realize he's not going to start City. But oh, I don't think he will, but he gives you that. Yeah. He's a good player, isn't he? Yeah. Do I good think player. if you move on to the midfield, if you follow Jürgen's, quite often they come in for 30, then they do 60, then they do 90. It's quite likely that it could be Endo Sobersly taking 60 minutes. Yeah. Pick another midfielder to go alongside them, Clark. probably Bobby Clark. Clark. Yeah. McAllister Get, comes on as the six and it, it, swaps with Endo. It's whether exactly. Sabozlai can do 60 or he needs another 30 before yeah. he can, yeah, And then it's McAllister for 60, Sabozlai for 30. So if if it's, let's say it's Clark who goes again, probably with the view that he comes out against City, let's say Endo and, and Sabozlai can do 60, yep. then you're li- it's likely that Elliot probably starts on the right. I think you've then maybe got a chance of 60 of Darwin Nunes. Mm-hmm. And then you might go Gakpo and push Nunes out to the left to give Diaz a little bit of time off. It's whether you want Nunes is your is your trump card a little bit in your X factor from the bench again, and in which case you'd have to go down. Because I don't think Nunes can play ninety. Let's put that. Out. I don't think he's got ninety in him. And if all of a sudden you you're saying we've got Darwin Nunes for sixty minutes. And you need Dan score, and I really like Jane Dan's thought he was brilliant again the weekend. I said to you this morning, I thought he was brilliant into holding up play and linking things together. Exceptional little cameo once again. But do you want him as your game changer from the bench? What I'm not I think sure. I think if, if you are Jürgen, I'm though, game changer. I don't, I don't think Salah goes to Prague. I'll, I'll get it. I don't think he's travelling to Prague. Yeah, I think if if you are Jürgen, if you give me if he can do sixty Darwin, I'm probably taking sixty of Darwin than okay. thirty of Darwin. 
mm-hmm. if you know what I mean, rather than being a game changer. I'd rather try and get the game done, and then I, then hopefully I get to make the decisions based on Manchester City, yeah. rather than I'm going a little bit weaker to then have to throw players on. I'd rather, if it was Jürgen, I think he'd probably go 60. Yeah, and again, just have a look. I, I, one thing is, is quite interesting in this. We played Union San Jolas. Now, of course, it was a dead rubber by the end, the the away game in that one. The starting 11 for that at the time was Keller heading goal. It was Chambers, Quanta, Canate, Bradley as a back four. Jones, Endo, Elliott was the midfield. And then it was Doak, Gakpo, Gordon. Now, of course, this isn't a dead rubber. This is a competitive game of football in, in you know in a, in a knockout round. Um but it's interesting that you know he has he has always rotated in the Europa League, and he will definitely. You know, this is not. I don't. The only way you're risking someone like a salad is if he just feels that he needs minutes. He needs to get. He needs to get something in his legs like ahead of City because we saw this the other week. Yeah. You know, we brought him in off the bench, and and then he's been out ever since. We don't really yeah. know what. I don't think anyone knows how to how to reintroduce an injured salad. He looked into fucking shit off, by the way, when he did come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. If. The thing is, if he doesn't get any minutes at Sparta Prague, I don't think he starts Man City. No, I agree, I agree with that. Yeah, I just don't think he'll. I, yeah. Are you not I think Salah at him? best You're not if just he doesn't. Lobbing him in. Maybe yeah, if he gets sure, half yeah. an hour in, in, on yeah. Thursday, you might you might look to start him because it's Salah and he's that good yeah. that he's probably not far off. You know. Yeah, no, it's, it's difficult. And ultimately, in an ideal world, I tend to agree with you, but I just mm. I just don't know if he goes to Prague this week. Mm. Dan's thing's interesting because. I don't think any one of us would be upset to see him start for Liverpool, but I just wonder whether there's something to you only get to burst onto the scene once, and he's doing a really good, exciting job of that so far. About whether you're just trying to you're just trying to keep him sort of chomping at the bit, you're trying to hold him back and having him be that impact sub. It, it disguises any limitation to being 18 when you're coming mm. on the pitch and you just get to run around and, and the you players know, are a little energetic. bit more tired yeah. than going up against gives you a better platform to build on but I'm not against Darwin doing Darwin 45 55 60 or whatever and then Jaden Dans can come on for him but again, the gap was there and I know, we, I know we just did a big chunk earlier on the podcast about how he's not quite firing as a number nine but he, he, he's been our he's been our main goal threat in the second you know like the league cup he's been the goal was the goal threat in that and if he's he's definitely once we've got Diaz Darwin and Salah available Gapo's not starting games of football for us so this might be a little the last chance to get him in there and see if we can get him a goal or two choices though guys so many choices mm. I mean we had that off the bench against Forrest me and Steve were doing the watch long going what does he do when he makes this substitution and no one had Bradley coming off for him, and then Gomez was it was it Gomez or Robertson? We made some mad ma- ma- that none of Gomez the right back was yeah. yeah, weird. Um, we was it a- Endo? No, it was, what was Robertson came off. He went to yeah. left back, yeah. then yeah, he went to right yeah. back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, was it was it the suppose like, anyway? It doesn't matter. It was one of them. Because was- then Costas came on, and that's when we switched him to yeah, right yeah. back. Um, David Jones of Sparta Prague are actually a decent team. Uh, they beat Galatasaray four one in the second yeah. leg of the last round. Uh, they are very pacey on counters and compact at the back. These are no walkover. But I mean, I don't mind if they're a, if they're a compact. If they're that team we've played loads of those teams haven't we I guess in some regards and this is why I just don't think Liverpool, I just think Liverpool needs a box cover here you know you don't need to you either go balls out let's just attack them let's go and get this game won in the first half of football and then shut up shop or you just go we're fine here we'll just play our game we'll be defensively resolute we're not going to throw the, you know the kitchen sink at it and if we come and if it's a tight game then fine but you just nullify every there if they're threat pace on the counter then don't don't give them that if we're not you know if we're trying to massage our way through to city anyway would be my would be my overall feeling on that one um okay good the only other note on this is obviously city play copenhagen Midweek, uh, which means they'll have three one off. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll have, and it means they'll have a little bit more rest than us ahead of the game, which is another considering factor in this. But it'd be nice if Copenhagen just gave them a, a bit of a, a bit of a game there. But it is a the whole lot hope for the that. Etihad, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't do too. Much at least, either. at least they, you know, I think you know they were always going to beat Manchester United, but at least they had to give it for ninety minutes to do it. <laughs> That's just fucking wonderfully dismissive. And they were always going to beat Man United because just to reiterate, Manchester United are shite. Yeah. That's basically what you, what you said. Gary Neville then. said two weeks ago now that they're getting top four. I've not heard from him since, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, they're yeah, shitty. 
<laughs> anyway, we can't have been talking about United. We're going to talk about how garbage Manchester United are over on the Bias Football Podcast, our, uh, the sister podcast of this one that we do pretty much straight afterwards live on redmenplus.com. Do take advantage of the new Nest code for 99p and get that podcast. We're 99p on its own, that podcast. It's our second best podcast, I think, after this one. I adore speaking about how shit Manchester United are on a weekly basis and, and you will enjoy listening to it. Me and my dad went to do the, the, the League Cup thing before and I said that to him I, it's my second favourite football topic after Liverpool is just discussing the problems at Manchester United so it's basically a large show a bit about that uh, or largely about that and then a bit about Man City and a few other things happen around the Premier League a bit more of a focus on the Europa League fixtures as well so come and join us over on redmenplus.com for that one. Before we wrap it up though can we maybe just give a little bit of air time to if our or Manchester City win late in a game it's you know championship winning form but if Liverpool uh, win late in the game it's the referee and corruption. it's a fucking screw <laughs> it's corrupt, corrupt, yeah. fucking everything else yeah. it's wishful thinking is that, that <laughs> is what it is they'd love it to be someone else they want to pin the blame on something instead of us just being good um, all the best uh, thank you so much for Title watching winning form yeah, absolutely watching and listening to the podcast this week leave a five star review on podcast and apps and we'll see you with another one next week Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.